Good morning, everyone. Let's all take a deep breath together. <clears throat> Let us come into this house of worship, come bringing all of who you are and how you are in your pajamas and your bedrooms and your coffee and your slippers and your no makeup or full makeup, showered or unshowered, however you are. Rest and quiet your weak, worn spirit. For you are here, we're all here to touch again the eternal springs of hope and renewal. For just this hour, let all of our cares and the worry and the fretfulness be set aside. 
turn off the news for a little bit. And know in this space that none of us are alone. And there is strength and support and caring for all of us, all, all the devices, all the people, all the faces. Look around, look at the, um, look at the gallery view. You are part of community and make of it what you will. So friends, we have a, a few announcements. I hope you can just bear with me here. Um, number one, we're recording this. So um, <laughs> just know that we're recording it. So smile. Um, number two, just a few Zoom things. Um, Amy Darmemple is, is our tech uh, expert. So she's muted you all, and that means that you can't unmute yourself. We don't do that lightly. We don't mean to mute you in perpetuity, um, but just gonna make it easier for us to be able to, uh, to keep the recording as clean as we can. There'll be certain parts in the service where we do ask, where we will unmute you, um, especially during the Wonderbox. So you'll get a note about that. Remember to switch to the gallery view. It's in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You see speaker view, you click speaker view, then you get my big face. If you click gallery view, you get all of us. Continue to look for the Monday email that Dara's gonna send tomorrow that's gonna have um, kind of the week's activities. Uh, this week, for example, is my men's group on Tuesday night, and then another time to gather for mutual support and kind of a covenant group model that will happen on Wednesday night that I'm gonna lead as well. So there'll be more, of, it's always gonna happen on Monday morning. Um, today, we're going to try a virtual coffee hour. It's going to be 20 minutes long, and um, Heather's going to uh, tell us how to do that at the end. So if you want to hang out for coffee, you, we can do that. Um, and possibly the coffee will be better because it's the one you're used to at home. Let's see. We are, a few people have asked, we're going to have to postpone, obviously, maybe, uh, the Cape Cod retreat, and there's going to be more information about that coming later. We just don't have enough information yet. This, this you know, is true for all of our lives in every single way, so we're just going to add that to the list. And the last thing, I know many of us are using the, uh, the chat function, and um, we're going to use that today for two, in two ways, well, one way in particular during the prayers. And I see, for example, that Alex Sarley's already posted a prayer. So my request of us is that we hold off on writing our prayers in the chat button until Emily Bruce, the intern, asks us to do that so that we can all look at those prayers for loved ones, for the world, and of Thanksgiving. So we can read those during that time. And the second request is that uh, we hold off on the chat function during the sermon. Um, I know that all of us love to go back and forth and maybe in this today's case to offer uh, Heather um, any opinions you might have, but let's hold off on those because it is distracting. We see the orange button at the bottom going back and forth. So just hold off on those during this sermon. And I think with that, that's all the announcements that we have for today. So the last thing I'd like to ask us to do, remember to go to coffee hour after the service. And as is our tradition, we will greet each other now with big waves. And you can, we have 164 participants, which means we have probably like 300 people on today. So just wave, everybody. And we now begin with our intro. And friends, just bear with us as we all learn this new tech.
We'll just be held in silence here as Amy gets the introit loaded up onto her screen. Apologies, everyone. We're taking a small break and I'm going to fix it up for you. <laughs> As Amy pulls up our opening words, I invite you to join with Emily leading in uh, our response. I will lead the minister's part and Emily will lead us. So I invite you to say the people's words with us at home. Blessed be you, technology adventurers, lovers of connection, digital or otherwise. Blessed be the cat who rubs their rear affectionately against the camera and the dishes that sanctify your humanity in the background, the dogs adding to the chorus. Blessed be the dropped links, the unmuted proclamations of boredom or commentary on the quality. Blessed be the video uploads the video uploads, the uploads. Blessed be the laughter, the something not quite right, peanut butter nestled on a lower lip, parsley lingering as lament. Blessed be you who are days in, with children screeching or pounding on doors, with family and worries and hair undone, with a slight cough that is terrifying you. With no lighting or angels making rings round your head, the shouts of well-intentioned love, you are on mute, you are on mute. Thank you for the trying, for the connecting, for the love across a desperate bandwidth, for meeting this light within each once more, however imperfectly, thank you. 
What a perfect introduction for our day. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We have a hymn for you, which we really would love you to sing along with um, while muted. Uh, it's a very familiar song, This Little Light of Mine. I hope all the children watching will sing along too. And if you need to know the lyrics, they'll be in the chat window. So you can pull that up and follow along. But I'm going to guess most of you can catch on pretty quick to this one. And I invite us to put us put ourselves uh, on gallery mode and, and see each other seeing, even if we can't hear each other singing. Big thanks again to Sarah and to Kathleen for going to the, uh, not the Malden Church, the other church, Sarah. Melrose. Melrose, thank you. Uh, yesterday to record all of this music. Friends, if you have a, a chalice or a candle nearby, let me invite us to find that. And as we get our chalices, let us light our chalice. And let us say together our covenant that Amy's gonna put up on the screen for us. Let us say together, love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love and to help one another. And we'll now have our doxology. I'm sorry, Reverend Nathan, I do not have a video for the doxology. That's right, we can just... Um... I can sing it, if you'll sing along with me. Sure. Okay. Here I'm gonna sing. From all that will be low the sky, let songs of hope and faith arise. Let peace, goodwill on earth be sung through every land by every tongue. Oh. Sarah, you are amazing. <laughs> it would have gone a lot differently if I tried to do that. 
I see too many of you nodding to that uh, statement. That's <laughs> like that. So listen, I love, uh, it's Wonderbox time. Um, it's actually Wonder Bag time because Heather took home the box, so I have a bag. I'd love for the, uh, the kids to come forward to the screens. And Amy's gonna um, give us the power, all of us to mute or unmute ourselves for this time because I'm actually gonna um, ask that some of our, that uh, the kids be able to answer some of the questions that I'm gonna ask. So Amy, you able to do that? Yes, I've just given per people permission to unmute. Okay. So, um, We've all been in the house. I mean, I know we've been out walking as much as we've been able to, but we've been in the house all this week, um, pretty much. And um, I, the first question I wanted to ask was, how do we know, like, what do we do? What are we doing to help calm ourselves for the, for the, for the children and youth in our, like, what are, you, what are you guys doing? Like, what do you, what are some of the strategies and the tactics you're using to help calm yourself down or if you're getting a little bit antsy? Who's felt antsy, by the way? We're doing lots of yoga. You're doing lots of yoga. So that's fantastic. All adults pay attention because <laughs> it will lead us. Yoga, what else? We're going on walks. We're going on walks. You're getting outside. Okay. What else? Dance parties. Say that again. Say that again, Ray. Dancing. Dancing. Looking at swing sets. Something at twin sets. All right. What else? We're making a geodesic dome. You're making a what? A geodesic dome. A geodesic dome. A geodesic dome. Except it's like a fort. Except it's a fort. So it's like a big. What else? Gymnastics. 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 Yeah. Bike ride. The bike ride. Oh, Building the Death Star. Really good. <laughs> I go Death Star. Can I show you one thing that's in my wonder box? I have a few things to show off. Can I sh show you my wonder bag? I should say. The first thing. It's really important during this time to have um, routines and things that we do. Uh, routine is just like a, um, a way to kind of start your day. So my wife, Karen, bought this uh, for our fridge. It says things to do around the house. And it's got a whole list and even a shopping list. And the top says what, where, and who. I need you to stop, OK? So we're kind of we're going to use this list. This we just we just got this the other day. We're going to use this list to kind of give us a sense of what we're going to try to do sort of every day to have a routine. And um, I know that for many of you, your parents and your your uh, guardians at home are trying to think of ways to have every day feel you know like there's something that you're gonna you're gonna get up in the morning. We're gonna um, have breakfast like we do. We're gonna have things that we're gonna uh, have a schedule for every day. And I think that that's for me, having a routine is really important to help sort of calm me down um, and bring some, um, I don't know, make me feel just a little bit more normal in this very unnormal time. The next thing that I have, I actually don't like board games that much, but the ones that I do, who likes to play games? Like we've been, you know, stuck inside. One of my most favorite games, and this is literally the one from um, my childhood. Swipe the other way. Swipe. His shoots and ladders. Uh, shoots and ladders. We love that game. It's a little bit of a frustrating game because you can get all the way to the top and then you go all the way back to the bottom. <laughs> I do. But it kind of feels like life sometimes. So I this is a time to find to what find what are some of the right games? Now? What are some of the games you guys have played? Candyland. Chinese checkers. Checkers. What else? Candyland. 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 Played to last night. Battleship. Yes. So my my invitation for us is to put that in the chat box. Some games you've played because I know that families are 
needing some uh, some guidance. Yeah. All right, some other things that I have in my wonder bag. We all need a place we can go. I'm gonna call it the um, the don't bother the don't bother me space. I love you a lot. The don't bother me space, and we. You know, in our houses, we need a place to go where we can kind of be set apart from and maybe just alone. And so, <laughs> no, anyone, everyone can see what this is? Let me stop it. It's a piece of rock. And do you know where it comes from? It's from my Don't Bother Me space. It's, this is from my basement. <laughs> I have a very old house, and it's an old fieldstone house, and this is a part of the, the wall. And I go to the basement when I just want to be kind of like left alone um, for a little while. Just and it's dark and it's dreary, but it's mine. So I love it. So I invite us to find a place that we can go to. That means just that we can kind of get some space to be alone. Another thing that I have in my bag, somebody already mentioned it, but um, we need to get outside and get some exercise. So you got to get a shoe on or shoes, hopefully two. Get some exercise and a ball. All the things have been canceled. The one thing that hasn't been canceled is being outside, everybody. Just get outside and take a deep breath. And the last thing that I have in my wonder bag is that um, I love music. I'm not that good at it, but I'm really trying to take guitar lessons on my new app. So these are some of my strategies. So I have exercise, guitar, finding a space that people won't bother me so much, games, and the last thing is just a little bit of stillness. And that's what this singing bowl is for just to be able to find a way to meditate, to be quiet with yourself. My request of all of us and of myself is that this week or tonight even, you as your family come up with the things that help you calm down and have a list of things that you can put up on the fridge or the wall, whatever is gonna work on a board and say, here are the things that help me kind of lower my antsy feeling and make me feel rooted in this uncertain time. So please put those uh, ideas as, as they come to you and we can talk about them in, in coffee hour um, as, we, as we go on with this. I love you all and we begin next with our prayer time with Emily. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> They're clicking around to like different people. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to ask everybody to mute themselves again um, on the bottom left corner of your screen so we can have uh, some prayer time, some quiet, and some rest. Um, thank you so much for doing that. So, as we transition now into a time of prayer and meditation and silence, I invite you all to get comfortable. Many of you already look comfortable, but let's get even more comfortable. Um, so sit back, let your body be supported by whatever seat you're in. If you're holding onto a coffee mug or a glass, maybe just put it down for the next couple minutes and let your hands just rest in your lap or by your side or wherever is comfortable. And let's just now take a few moments to give ourselves over to rest. And I invite you to take a few breaths. And as you do, work on trying to release some of the stress and anxiety that you're carrying around. We're all doing that. So take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, drop your shoulders. Take another deep breath in and try to just relax all of the muscles in your body as you exhale. 
Take another deep breath in and just rest into the position that you're sitting in. Let yourself be supported by the seat that's holding you and feel that seat grounding you to this space and to this earth that we all share. So as you continue, just breathe and rest and relax. We're going to start with our call to prayer, Ubi Caritas. We will play Sarah's recording and you are invited to sing along or simply listen. If you want to sing along, the words are in the chat box to your right. This morning, we will continue the initiative that a lot of you took last week, and you will be invited to write your prayers into the chat box. So for anyone who has not yet discovered the chat box, all you have to do is click the chat link at the bottom center of your screen, and the box will open up on the right-hand side. So as we hold each other through this virtual worship, I now invite you to remember those that surround you and those that may be far away. I invite you now to offer prayers that you carry for your loved ones, for your families, for your friends, for our congregation, and for all that you hold near and dear to your heart. Please enter your prayers now. For all of these prayers for our loved ones, we light a candle. Today is World Water Day, which is a day to remind us of the importance of fresh water. And so in this time of global pandemic, let us remember those who lack clean water. In this time of frequent hand washing, let us think of those who do not have access to fresh potable water. And let us pray for the health and safety of the developing world. I now invite you to offer your own prayers for the world this morning.
For all of these prayers for our world, we light a candle. And finally, for the many, many blessings that we have to be grateful for, for the joy and the peace we are still able to find, and for the love that we share with those around us, I now invite you to offer your own prayers of thanksgiving this morning. For all of these prayers of thanksgiving, we light a candle. Friends, keep the prayers coming. They're beautiful to witness. And I invite all of us to pause briefly just to take in all of these prayers that we've offered. Too many to count, all of them meaningful, all of them special and holy. Nathan often says that prayer changes people and people change things. So my prayer for all of us is that we are changed by the prayers that we offer today and every day. And will you please now join me in offering a collective prayer for our community. Holy love, we are blessed to be in this virtual community space this morning. Help us to remember those who, un who are unable to connect to their communities today. Help us to remember the sick, the isolated, and the lonely, that they might find belonging and peace. As we enter another week of this crisis, help us to be gentle with ourselves. Fear, anger, and disappointment can seem to be constant companions these days. Frustration, bored, boredom, and pessimism too. We are not the superheroes in those Marvel movies that we may be binge watching these days, and that's okay. We can't heal the world on our own, and that's okay. We can't reopen the restaurants reschedule the canceled events, or restock the stores with toilet paper and disinfectant. And that's okay. We are often not our best selves in this crisis, and let us acknowledge that. Let us breathe in those moments of panic and fear. Let us take a walk, because we can still go out and take a walk when the frustration level rises, when the overwhelm becomes too much, when we forget that we are in the middle of a moment that we cannot yet define. Give us patience with each other and ourselves. Help us to find our resilience so that we can be strong for others. Remind us of the great love that is bigger than illness, bigger than social distancing, bigger than the fear. Help us to remember that we are always, always held by that love. And may we continue to breathe deep, to show up for each other, and to keep each other going. May it be so. Let us now be still together.
<clears throat> oh, thank you, Kathleen. Thank you for the cold play. So friends, this morning, um, I wanna thank actually particular uh, Kevin Paul and uh, Peter Gormley and um, our bookkeeper, Laura Crawford and Heather Walker and Dara for figuring out how we can um, do electronic giving to support both the church and the outside recipients of our offering. We figured that out. They spent a ton of time this week uh, enabling us to do that. So this morning, we're going to share our offering with a place to turn. Many of us know that under the faithful stewardship of Barbara Breer over the years, which provides emergency uh, food resources to people in Metro West, uh, Metro West Boston. They're obviously not accepting food this, at this time, but they do need our, um, our financial gifts as much as we're able to give them. So you're going to, um, you see the instructions there. You can do this, you know, uh, after the service, if you'd like to, you rel you log into your Realm account and non-members may donate as guests and then you enter the amounts that you'd like to donate to. So please be generous for a place to turn. And um, also, look, we all know that the, the, the whole other impact of this uh, virus is the economy and the uncertainty that it, that it uh, is giving all of us. Um, so as much as we're able, I ask us to um, continue our pledges to the church, the pledges you've made for this year. You can do that via this link that uh, is up on your screen, as well as um, if you don't have a pledge, just donate to, uh, donate to the church and, and donate in this, in this case, in this week's case, to a place to turn. Um, it will enable all of us in our different ways to, to continue our ministries. Um, and we thank you. The, realm, the link to the Realm account will be in the chat button, okay? We have more music now. Our reading this morning is entitled Lockdown, and it was written by the Franciscan friar Richard Hendrick. 
Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that after just a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and gray and clear. They say that in the streets of Assisi, people are singing to each other across the empty squares, keeping their windows open so that those who are alone may hear the sounds of family around them. They say that a hotel in the west of Ireland is offering free meals and delivery to the housebound. Today, a young woman I know is busy spreading flyers with her number through the neighborhood so that the elders may have someone to call on. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques, and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, and the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbors in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little control we really have, to what really matters, to love. So we pray and we remember that yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is panic buying, but there does not have to be meanness. Yes, there is sickness, but there does not have to be the disease of the soul. Yes, there is even death, but there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake to the choices you make as to how to live now, today. Breathe. Listen. Behind the factory noises of your panic, the birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul. And though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, sing. So friends, last Sunday, before we got onto Zoom to worship online together, which is the first time in our church's history, our church, which goes back to 1685, which I just wanna pause and think about that for a moment. Our church, our sanctuary has seen our community, continual community, through every world event, every war, every un economic uncertainty, every pandemic. This sanctuary was gathered online last week for the very first time in our history. And that is truly remarkable. But before we got online, I was distracted from getting ready to lead worship by a cat doing figure eights around my legs, begging me to feed her. Now, in my household, Sparrow is always the one who reminds us that it is time to feed her. And as I filled up her bowl last week, I noticed that her brother, Phoenix, had not really touched his food from the night before. And it dawned on me that while Sparrow seemed to be eating just fine, Phoenix had been picking at his food for almost a week. So I went into the kitchen to get some coffee, and I said to my partner, Ian, that I was a little worried that Phoenix didn't seem to be eating. And we realized that this week alone, Ian and I had to, had to do rock, paper, scissors at least three times over who would have to clean up cat vomit. So a piece of cat context that you non-cat people might want to know, which is that loss of appetite and vomiting can be signs of really, really serious health issues in cats. And a piece of personal context that you should know is that the last two cats I've had died or got lost tragically, tragically young. Um, and I can also tend to be a worrier. So before worship started last week, I got myself a little worked up. I tried feeding Phoenix special cat food, wet food, getting him to eat, no avail. I tried, I looked up the cat's hours, the vet's hours, and they were closed until the next morning. So I made a plan to call at 9 a.m. on Monday morning. I got tuna juice and put it on his dry food, nothing. 
he just sniffed at the bowl, licked all the special enticing food that I put out and walked away. And here's the loop that was running in my brain. Does my cat have cancer? Has my cat eaten one of the plants that I have in the house that, and I've accidentally poisoned him? Did he eat actual poison? Did one of the previous inhabitants of our house leave rat poison out that I haven't yet found, but he has? Does he have a rare but terminal genetic disease? Are the vets open in the middle of a pandemic? Can animals get medical attention if society is socially distancing and non-essential services are closed? What is essential anyway? So while I had more or less convinced myself and was beginning to emotionally process this idea that my one-year-old cat might actually be dying. I pushed it out of my mind, telling there, myself there was nothing that I could do until the vet's office opened the next morning. He would probably be fine for 24 hours. And I joined all of you. So fast forward to early that afternoon when I was doing some home housework and I opened the cabinet to where the cat food is kept and I noticed some of the cat food was spilled right on the floor next to where one of the bags is. And the bag had a tear in it. And I should mention here that my partner Ian and I had both bought extra cat food in our social distancing preparations without coordinating with one another first. So we ended up with about six bags of cat food in our house. And as I pulled out the first bag of cat food to tape close the tear, I noticed that the one behind it was also ripped. And I pulled that one out and I noticed that the one behind that was also ripped. And as I pulled out the bags one by one, I discovered that all six of them were somewhere between bitten open and completely shredded. And throughout the cabinet, as I pulled out these bags of cat food, I discovered piles of cat food everywhere. Unbeknownst to me, Phoenix had learned how to stand up on his hind legs, use his paw to open the door, sneak in and let the door shut behind him so he was hidden inside with piles and piles of cat food. He had spent the previous week feasting to his heart's content. He was not sick, he was not dying, he was stuffed to the gills. Friends, as funny as this story is, this was also a wake up call for me because it showed me just how primed my brain was in the middle of all of this for worst case scenarios. How hypervigilant I am right now, how tense, and how much the fight or flight response has been activated within me. Maybe this is true for you as well. And unlike my own personal lesson this past week, my lesson around how tense and how worried and how ready my brain is for tragedy, unlike that experience where my cat was just fine, we know that there are many people right now who are not going to be fine. We know that there is going to be irreparable harm and loss and pain that comes out of this time, both the disease and its secondary effects. And that that is going to be true for many, many people and that this is very, very real and very scary. And I also want us to notice the ways that our nervous systems and our brains might be especially amped up these days, primed for the very worst case scenarios. One big lesson that I took from my rushing to a conclusion is that my brain right now is getting ahead of itself, that I was already suffering from things that had not yet happened, that I had some information in front of me, but that I added a lot of information and interpretations that caused me to suffer more. Friends, the world we lived in 10 days ago is no longer the world we live in. Every day this week, I have had to re-remember that this is happening. I have had to readjust my expectations, my predictions, my plans, my routines. My life looks so different already than it did two weeks ago. And I have felt on several occasions disoriented and on edge. News and information is coming at me somehow even more rapidly and overwhelmingly than ever. And I didn't think it could get much faster. And I know that this has been a nearly universal experience that we are living with so much uncertainty collectively of how long this will last, of how bad this will be, of who will be affected and how, of who will get sick, of whether this will come into our own lives in a terrifying way, of whether as society we can flatten a curve, of whether we can care for those among us who are vulnerable in so many ways. 
This is a scary, scary time. And here's what I want to say to all of you. We are in a time of collective heightened hypervigilance. Our bodies and our brains are primed right now to jump to worst case scenarios, to conclusions, to what ifs, to fight or flight or freeze stances. This is what my mentor Pippi Kessler calls an evolutionary perk of being a human, which is to say it is a totally, totally normal reaction. And yet, I believe it may be causing us more suffering than it is offering us protection. So as much as we can, I invite us to notice this week when that evolutionary perk of being a human, our brains getting ahead of ourselves, has crossed the line from protection, which right now I think looks like reasonable precautions and social distancing, into suffering, which may look different for each of us. And when we've crossed that line from protection into suffering, I invite us instead to breathe. Close your eyes, put your feet on the ground, even if you feel like the ground is shifting underneath you. Quiet your body and your mind until you can hear three new sounds that you didn't hear a moment ago. Breathe again. Go outside and check on the crocus, the daylily, the daffodil in your neighborhood that is stubbornly, resiliently pushing itself through the soil. Slow down. Turn off the news and turn on some music. Take a shower, put on clothes, light a candle, go for a walk, move your body, Make some tea, pray, meditate, pet an animal, ground yourself in the here and now, slow down, breathe. I learned this week that the root of the word comfort means to make strong. So in the days ahead, I invite us to get comfortable, to take comfort, to comfort one another. Offer comfort, comfort yourself, and give us the strength that we need to see each other through this. My friends, I love you, I miss you, I find comfort in being together and it gives me strength. I hope that is true for you as well. Amen. We have another hymn for, for everyone now, Love Will Guide Us. And once again, the words to the hymn will be in the chat box and um, you'll hear the hymn on recording. Please sing along. I am looking around to see who's singing because I love to see it. And I hope you do too.
I invite us to join in our call to ministry. We go forth into the world in peace to act with works of love, to affirm each person's dignity and to cherish the living earth. Friends, for our benediction, I invite us to hold hands virtually. Can each person put their hands up like this? Connect your hands with the people that you're in there with and see if you can line up your hands with the people you are next to. Can you see us all holding hands? Our benediction today is adapted from Reverend Erica Hewitt. The hand in yours belongs to a person whose heart is sometimes tender, whose skin is sometimes thin, whose eyes sometimes fill with tears, whose laughter is a beautiful sound. The hand reaching across this distance belongs to a person who is seeking wholeness and trusts that you are doing the same. As we leave our virtual sanctuary, may your hearts remain open May your voices remain strong. And though far away and though metaphorical, may your hands remain outstretched. Amen. And blessed be. Friends, we invite you to stay for a virtual coffee hour. So after our postlude ends, there will be the link to the um, offering once again, after our postlude ends, please stay on the line if you would like to um, join in breakout groups. We're going to have breakout groups of about uh, eight to 10 people, and I will be splitting you up uh, through our breakout function. So please stay on the video call if you'd like to stay for coffee hour, and we hope you'll join us. <laughs>